Okay. Yeah, so good morning, everybody. Uh, wonderful to see you all here once again. Hope you've had a good, pleasant couple of days before. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so welcome to week eight of our class on emotional wholeness. Uh, welcome to the e-learning students as well. Uh, thank you for uh, being faithful and uh, ensuring that you're uh, following with us week after week uh, doing the doing the knowledge checks and the and the application we really appreciate your questions and your interaction with us now just before we get started it's just just an announcement that um, uh, the graded assessment the first graded assessment has been uploaded it was uploaded last week your uh, due date is on march 8th so i'm requesting each of you to kindly uh, be up to date with that and complete it before the March of 8th. That is for the online students. And for those who are uh, uh, the e-learning students, you have time till the end of the course uh, to finish it. Uh, so you can, you can uh, do it at your pace, but definitely before the end of the course, which is the April 28th. Um, but for the online students, please ensure that you do it before the 7th, uh, to, before the 8th of March. Um, so that you can get your marks and that uh, goes into your final grade as well. Um, I will release the marks once everyone has finished. So and for those of you who had finished earlier, thank you. I appreciate that you've been able to do your work on time, but kindly bear with me with patience till uh, um, the rest of your classmates are up to date with that and I will release it all together. Okay, good. So shall we just start with a word of prayer and... Uh, we can uh, head right in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace this morning. Thank you because your mercy follows us every moment of our lives. Thank you because you are with us and you are uh, within us, Father, working good things, Lord. Lord, even as we um, move into our lesson today of journeying into emotional wholeness, thank you for taking us through the last week of uh, releasing and and uh, coming to you with with our confession and with our declaration of our healing father even as we look into how we can maintain this and how we can walk into our wholeness on a day-to-day -day basis i pray that you will give us willing hearts and open minds and and earnest spirits to hear from you thank you lord i bless each person who's joined in today we pray for all those who are uh, still to log in. I pray that you would remove any kind of hindrance uh, from their lives so that they could join in and be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So um, uh, we, we're going to move into our next uh, uh, portion of what we're learning. And uh, just for us to um, follow through, we're on journeying into emotional wholeness. I'm just uh, bringing up the page. Yeah, and we're on chapter five. Um, we're on chapter five, and that's on page um, uh, 26. We're on chapter five and page 26. Okay, so um, would, would anybody like to quickly go through what we did the last two classes on our um, receiving uh, healing and deliverance, what were some of the things that we learned? We, we went through um, some of those action points last week and uh, you know we went through uh, praying together to casting out um, whatever that was not of God. So I, I, I believe that was a time that was blessed and um, you know really spoke to each one of us. So anyone would like to quickly do a recap as to what we, what we handled last, last week? the most difficult part of class, isn't it? <clears throat> yes? Somebody? Are we all just waking up? Or ready to sleep? Okay. Thank you, Abhishek. Yes, we renounce sin 
and consecrated ourselves to God. Okay, thank you. That's that's wonderful. Thank you, Abhishek. All right. What what were the other steps that uh, we followed last week? Ma'am, we uh, almost covered 14 different points, uh, uh, taking one step at a time and uh, we uh, towards emotional wholeness. So healing and deliverance through sanctification and consecration we started with. And then we moved on to uh, understanding how God's presence and anointing can break the yoke of enemy and uh, help us in this journey of healing and deliverance. Uh -huh. And then uh, how we can, uh, repentance is one of it, we can repent, I mean we should repent, ask God for forgiveness, Yes. Uh, believe in the finished work of the cross, what God mm -hmm. has done for us on the cross uh, right. helps us in this journey and uh, uh, we learned about uh, the truth of God's word, uh, mm -hmm. how it can help uh, us renew our mind through God's word mm -hmm. and uh, be able to release forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Also, if uh, if there are any lies that we are holding on to in our hearts, we, mm -hmm. uh, we are called to renounce it and renew our mind and mm -hmm. embrace the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. and then... Uh, uh, if we have any idea of anything that is holding us, uh, then we can pay for uh, closing all the entry points. Okay. So, Great. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Avni. Uh, would like, someone else like to take over from what Avni is saying? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Excellent. Or um, what What are some of the changes that we, I think what, what Avni was talking about was what we do, the, the initial 10 points that we do in, uh, actively resisting and you know coming to a place of uh, 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 repentance, forgiveness, consecration, also uh, renouncing that which is of the enemy. So, what are some of the lifestyle uh, changes that we we need to take place? The last four points. Someone else could take over. So, this also helps your online, uh, sorry, the e-learning students as well to to do a recap. What were the last four points that we looked into? Um, where uh, it, it's more practical, more tangible uh, uh, things that we do <clears throat> to receive our healing. Anybody else? Make lifestyle changes. Yeah, I think Sissy has written that. Yeah, to learn and develop skills. Yes, it is to cut away. I think, yeah, someone, someone uh, is... Uh, Sissy, yes, go, go ahead. ahead. God's word should be in our us so that we can bring it out in our life. Okay. Okay. Bring changes in our life because of listening, mm -hmm. speaking, and God's word. This can bring mm -hmm. changes in our life. All right. Right. Okay. And ultimately, our, our life becomes clean and we become okay. the temple of God. Mm -hmm. And we can honor God through this. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy. Yes. So a couple of things that uh, uh, highlighted in what Sissy said was uh, the first one is to cut off all ties, cut off anything that keeps us from going back to our sinful uh, selves, our sinful nature. So that could be probably relationships or anything that has kept, kept, us, kept us from our emotional healing. The second one is being uh, using the word of God to um, uh, renew it, to meditate on his word, to obeying God's word on a regular basis and developing those patterns where we continuously uh, renew our minds with, with God's word. Then it is also to develop a godly lifestyle, being able to um, keep ourselves uh, away from, from lusts of, uh, and continue to pursue righteousness and thereby growing into Christ-likeness. And lastly, we said was, uh, developing certain skills that we need for a life of wisdom and fruitfulness because wisdom is what brings success. Okay, great. Uh, Abhinas, did you have a question? No, ma'am. Actually, I just wanted to say something, but I think you have told. So you can. Why don't you add in, please? It would be nice to hear you. Yeah. Like, uh, th there's a point eleven, right? This is 
uh, sever all ties like mm-hmm. last time mm-hmm. you said that it could be the relationship it could be place where we go it could be some events or habitual mm-hmm. scene mm-hmm. things that uh, we read books or it could be the browsing what we do see mm-hmm. so we have to cut off all of that and right. when we come to the renewing our mind uh, here we can do that the meditated god's word listening mm-hmm. verse songs memorizing verse so that it will be helpful when right. we find challenge or we fall yeah and that then is develop a godly lifestyle so mm-hmm. we ensure that we keep our life that honors god so we are called to be free from ungodliness yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. great thank, thank you. you thank you so much abinas thank you nice very nice okay so <clears throat> we're going to move into um uh, the next part of of our uh, uh, of our learning which is how do we journey into this uh, emotional wholeness now um you know through the last time we 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 um we spoke about the basis of what our healing and deliverance is we spoke about how we re- uh, receive that healing and deliverance and we we did pray we we've taken that action point you know coming forward in first of all recognizing and then uh, coming to a place of taking action that is to uh, repent to confess to uh, to to renew uh, to uh, cut off uh, to consecrate to to rebuke everything that is not of god so we've come to a place to do that and and while that is very necessary uh we cannot just stop at at just doing that we cannot stop at um uh, at that that place now we need to move ahead we need to journey into a place of emotional wholeness in order for us to stay emotionally whole so we can't just stop at praying and taking action but it is something that is done on a continual basis something that you do regularly to uh to maintain that like um you know if if we were to look at a parallel example if uh, <clears throat> um let's say you've had some kind of an injury um now to your or or maybe it's it's some kind of a um a, a, a transient disease that's come or a transient uh, illness that's come about and you found that there is a certain cause and you treated the cause and you've got that out you have to continue walking in that you know you have to continue ensuring that you don't put yourself in any kind of a jeopardy or any kind of a struggle that will bring you back to that initial place so that's something that you need to do on a regular basis so that's what we are going to look look at as to what are some truths or some practices or some disciplines that we must live by consistently as we move into a place of emotional wholeness and this is more um um it, it's 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 maybe probably not something that you can do as in the sense of you know tangibly do but this is something that you discipline your spirit you discipline your spiritual mind to stand on the truth to stand focused on um the truth of what what we are going to learn and um just to quickly discuss these three um as in the sense of you know talking about it as three pointers um uh, we we will we will take each of them in Uh, in length as we move towards today's class okay so the first one is to be in a place or uh, having standing on the foundation of this truth of receiving the father's god the father's love receiving god the father's love the second one the second truth that we stand on is to be established in our identity in christ and not just uh, knowing and establishing it but even living out of that identity and the third is uh, being able to release the past to be able to let go of what has been our past now these even as we look at these three topics they may be quite um, um, you know huge and quite extensive and uh, uh, if if uh, so for those of you who may be interested um, there are um, specific uh, uh, studies and and sermon series 
on each of this and um, you know if we if if you would if you would like to know more we're just probably going to take a couple of insights from it and maybe and not really going to go into lengths uh, of it uh, but you know to go back and read some of that and i can put it on the stream i shall uh, add it on the stream um, as well as on the e learning portal for other reading that you can actually go back to on the father's love as well as who you are in Christ. So these are extensive studies that have been done. Uh, and, uh, you know, to, to just listen to it and grow uh, in these disciplines. But here for our course and for our class, we will be just taking a couple of insights so we can begin to grow in these areas. OK, so uh, we will take each one of on one of these uh, one by one. So the first one, as we said, is a receiving the father's love. So um, we know, we understand, and the Bible declares that God is our Heavenly Father. The Bible declares that God is love. And he declares that there is a Father in Heaven who is a God of love. And when we understand that, fa that the Father is a God of love, he, we are um, we have been, we are his creation who must receive this love. So it's not just about knowing about the love, but coming to an understanding of this love, having a deeper revelation of this love for ourselves. And after having that revelation, to be able to walk in this, to be able to live out of this. And this becomes the place of emotional wholeness. So when we look at the Bible, and right from the beginning of its pages till the end, one of the key messages of the Bible is about the love of God and how God, uh, being our Heavenly Father, wants to have a love relationship with us, His his children, wants to have a love relationship with mankind. And from the beginning, it talks of how, and there are so many um, examples of people who walked through uh, uh, the Bible, and, and we see of how God has um, uh, poured out his love. God has wooed them. God has pursued people of his love. Um, God has um, uh, instituted many things in, to show his love, and we see um, the, the greatest uh, um, truth of love through Jesus, of how God the Father sent the Son so that we could be saved because of, of what he did for us on the cross. So the entire of the Bible is, is all about, it's a love letter. It is a love letter to, to each one of us uh, to, to help us stand in the truth of what uh, of what God talks about, um, just a little little bit pulling out from one of the other classes that we've been talking about, and that's Christian counseling. When we spoke about the human needs, you know, the the most crucial needs of man, we see that uh, one of the biggest attributes before the fall was that. We were inherently loved. Adam and Eve, being being in in the position that they were, they were inherently loved. They were those attributes were there. They didn't have to seek after God's love. They they just knew and felt and walked the presence and the love of God in their communion with Him. Okay, so you can just probably imagine what happened before the fall, where Adam and Eve were in perfect communion with God, and and feeling completely loved and ex, ex, um, uh, completely loved as well as being able to experience his love in a very tangible way. So we see in scripture shows us that the father's love is perfect. If you look in our world here on earth, our lives here, you and I will not find this kind of a love. The love, human love, is limiting. Human love is very often conditional. Human love changes. Human love is meted out because of certain measures. We find that what we see here on earth is not what the love of the Father is. 
Okay. And a lot of times we measure God's love by what you and I have experienced in uh, here on earth, in, in the way that others have related to us, in the way that love has been shown to us. We see that God's love, the Father's love, is unlimited. <clears throat> that means there's no end to the love, right? There is, there is, um, there is. It, it keeps on and on and on. Uh, it is immeasurable, which means there are no dimensions to the love. In, um, in fact, I think we will be looking at one of the scriptures that talks about his, the dimensions, dimensions of his love. That says how wide, how deep, how long is his love to us, right? There is, there isn't any kind of a boundary to this love. It's unconditional, which means it is not based on what you do or what you have done. It, you don't need to earn it. You don't need to perform to earn it. You only need to receive it. Whereas you will see human love is very conditional, you know, like you get me this much, uh, you know, you do this for me, and then you, you, you know, I will love you. Or you, um, you know, if you are able to meet this and this for me, then I will love you. So human love is um, uh, is conditional, whereas the love of God is not based on who we are. It's not based on what we have done. The love of God is consistent. That means he loves us at all times, whether you've been good, whether you've been bad, whatever you are, his love is consistent. It doesn't change. It is the same today, tomorrow, forever. His love is always there. It is who, it is, it is we who need to respond to that love. It is we who only need to receive it. It's only taking from God. You know, it's, it's like this. When um, you make a huge meal and uh, lay it on the table and you invite your guests to enjoy what is there, Unless and until they receive it, they come in and take of it and eat of it and partake of it, they don't experience the love. And the Father's love is there for you to, for you to receive, for you to take. We see, uh, you know, John 3, 16 talks about how much, how much uh, God loved the world. It says God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us. It's that much that he loved the world, that his creation, that he didn't withhold his most precious um, uh, part of a part of himself, that is his son. So he did this, and he he uh, and you know often even Paul talks about it. It's easy to give up something for somebody who who is good or someone who is probably worth it or someone who deserves it. But we see in Romans five eight, he did this for us even when we were still sinners. He did it for us even when we were still sinners. So he loved us so much that uh, even in our state of fallenness, even in our state of depravity, God loved us so much. And uh, it, this, was, this was something that, that's not, that was not conceived after that thing, but this was God's plan right even before creation, even before he chose the foundations of the world. Ephesians 1, 4 to 6 says that, okay? And let me read that out for you. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that he should be holy and without blame before him in love. So this verse says, God chose you, each one of us, he chose us, and he decided to love us even before the foundation of the world, even before your mother conceived you in your womb, womb even, before, even before the foundation of the world, it says God has chosen you. That's how sovereign and limitless God is, that he knew each one of us. He, he 
loved us even before we ever came to be. Now that's, you know, just think about it. That's, that seems kind of unimaginable for us because we are so bound by space, by time, by understanding, by actual uh, interactions that, you know, it, it's just something that we're not able to conceive. But it says here, he chose us in him. So he chose us in him even before the foundations of the, of the world. And, and what did he choose us? Uh, choose us? He, he says that, you know, we should be holy and blameless. That is, we are so covered in his love. And because of the covering of his love, we stand holy and blameless in Jesus Christ. So he chose us to be holy and without blame uh, before him, you know, by where we were covered and clothed and surrounded and immersed in his love. Now, because we are in his love, we are holy and blameless. And out of this immeasurable, unconditional love, he, it says he brought us to be his sons and daughters. So verse 5 says, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. So because, and out of this love, because we are covered and immersed and surrounded by his love, we became his sons and daughters. And he was, and was this out of a grudge? No, it says according to the good pleasure of his will, which means he was absolutely pleased to do this and make it happen, all right? It's not something that you know as a you know as you know as parents we may do that um, maybe grudgingly or not really wanting to do something because you know that your child has made uh, an error which you have probably told him a couple of times and then you grudgingly meet out something but here scripture says it is out of his love that he has predestined that means he has already even before everything, the foundation of the world, he called us to be his sons and daughters. And that's how much he loved, loved us. And he did it out of the good pleasure of his will. You know, he was delighted. He was glad to, to do that for us. And, uh, and so he, he says he decided to adopt us into his family. He wanted, he decided, he said, these are my children and they will be adopted into into uh, into the family and thus we are called sons and daughters and verse 6 says to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved which means we are accepted by god in the beloved because of his love so you know this shows us just how much god loved us he loved us so deeply with such a great love even when we were lost and dead in our sins. He loved us so much that he would bring us out of what we were in and move us to a place to, to be seated with him, to be elevated with him, as we, as we read in Ephesians 2, uh, 4 and 7. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So he loved us so much with such a deep love. It says a rich it is a rich in mercy and because of his great love. I mean, these are such um, uh, strong, uh, um, you know, uh, words. And I'm sure when we see, read it in the Hebrew also, it, it has so much of power and so much of uh, depth in it. Where And it says, when we were dead in sins, he still loved us and brought us out to where we are, to seat us alongside with him. Okay? So um, even when we had no so what this verse is actually saying is even when we had no inclination towards god even when we didn't even have god on our minds he loved us and he made us sit next to him so his love for us is beyond our understanding immeasurable 
unlimited and absolutely unconditioned. So all, like we said, all we need to do is to receive this love and be completely established in this, to be firmly established in this and let God love us because he chose to love us. And we see in, um, uh, in you know, if, if you look at Ephesians 3, 17 to 19, it talks about this, this dimensions of love. So let me read that for you, Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So it is to just show that we are securely and firmly established in this love that God has for us. And uh, this it, it's there, it's, it, it, you know, it's as rooted and grounded in love. You know, think of a tree that, um, that is rooted, that especially those trees that go deep and wide, uh, you know, through the ground, through the soil, to keep its roots strong. It's really difficult to uproot a tree that has um, itself rooted in, in, in the soil. So imagine ourselves being rooted and grounded in the love of God. So think of yourself like a tree being rooted in the love of God. So um, and now, for example, you know, it's really easy to shake some, uh, to shake a tree or a plant or a, um, you know, or, or a, a, a plant being um, if it is not rooted well enough, if it is, if it doesn't have its root strong well into the ground, it's very easy to uproot a, uproot a tree like that, right? And that's the picture that Paul is attempting to give us that we need to build our roots of our, our, our lives grounded completely in the knowledge that God the Father loves us. So no matter what the storm comes, whatever the storm may be, the storm of confusion, the storm of fear, or a storm of uh, difficulties, or a storm of um, uh, uh, sickness, whatever it may be, it will not shake you because you know that you are being grounded in the love of God. So, so that's what it means to be secure and firmly established in the love that God has for you. So when we're looking at emotional wholeness, the more that we receive this love, the more that we stay rooted and established in this love, when human love fails, when human love corners us, questions us, betrays us, abandons us, when human love meets it out partially or conditionally, we are in a place of not being moved because we know that God's love for us is strong. God's love for us is deeper than what we are able to imagine and experience, but to be able to fill our minds with the love of God, to continue to keep our minds um, strong with the love of God. Okay, we we are to know that by experience that this immeasurable love, that that this love is beyond knowledge. So it would mean when we are going through the storms of life, we when we say we are being rooted and established in God's love, we are saying that I know my Father so much, I know my Father loves me so much that there is nothing He will do to me. That will that is beyond his control or beyond his plan or beyond his love for me. That's what being rooted is. Often we find ourselves questioning God with the things that come up. You know, why God? Why me? Or why is it that I have to go through this? Why is it that so and so has has had it better than me? Uh, when we are saying we are rooted and we experience this immeasurable love, we are so sure that no matter what comes to us, we know that God in his wisdom and in his love will not allow anything 
more than what we can what we can bear right so being established in that love now when we are rooted in this unlimited immeasurable unconditional unchanging love of god what does it do it sets us free you know first john 4:18 says perfect love casts away all fear or perfect love banishes all fear it sets us free from fear we know that the that uh, that perfect love comes only from the source and the source is god and experiencing every day the perfect love of god frees us and it's such a beautiful thing that it frees us from things like fear anxiety depression torment uh um bitterness it it frees us from this love just to understand that god's love for us is never never changing even though the love that we may experience in our earthly lives may may wax and may wane may 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 be short may be uh, may be conditional okay we we see that you know when uh, especially when we we um are going through something difficult the first thing that comes about is fear and that what does fear have fear torments right uh, uh the the only other place that where there is torment is uh, is is hell so fear is like living in hell you know living living in fear is just just so um so binding it it is so so trapping it it can just captivate you that you're in a place of torment that you're not able to move out okay but when we settle in this love we do not have to fear anything not what is what is here right now that that is uh, that we are going through neither anything in our future future either when we experience the of uh, god the father's love we definitely go through it it brings about a sense of release it it gives us it exchanges something for us and and let's just look at 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 that you know just experiencing and being rooted and establishing in the father's love what does it do it takes us away it releases us from guilt it releases us from a, a state of shame it releases us from condemnation why because he calls us holy and blameless and we are protected and covered in his love so it takes away this um the sense of guilt or the sense of separation that we feel from god when when we are in a place of guilt or in a place of shame right because god the father says he has received us even when we were dead in sins even when we have been been absolutely guilty of the worst kind of sin that is we are just understanding and experiencing the father's love removes away every kind of guilt and shame and condemnation experiencing god's love for us releases us from feeling unloved or rejected so even if people around you reject you you don't have to live in this rejection because as as we read in ephesians 1:6 you are fully and completely and totally accepted in the beloved you are accepted you are loved you are not seen the way a human sees you okay even if there is a rejection in the natural even if there is abandonment in the natural even if there is comparisons in the natural you can be assured that you are fully and completely and totally accepted for who you are for the way that god made you he made you with a purpose and he loved you that way so no matter what rejection you may be feeling and it this can come through very many different ways it can be coming from your own homes it can be coming from your marriages it can be coming from your children it can be coming from your workplace it can be coming from even within the way that you've just rejected yourself it can be it can come from probably uh, your own family where there has been rejection in the past it, it can come in different ways but you can stand grounded on the truth that you are completely accepted in him experiencing the father's love 
um, brings you, it releases you from the need to do something to earn God's love, that you need to be a certain way in order for God to love you. Human love, yes, needs to be earned unless and until you reciprocate or you do something, um, you, you know, you don't, you don't experience love. But he loved us even before even we knew him. That's what First John 4, 9 and 10 says. He loved us even before we knew him, even before we, we were conceived in our mother's womb, he knew us. And so uh, there's nothing you and I need or can do to earn his love or nothing that you do will make him love you more or will make, make him love you less. Okay? Uh, experiencing the father's love releases you from that sense of worthlessness or unworthiness. Often uh, the love of a human can, can make you feel worthless. Uh, you may be pinning on something, pinning on um, the affection of someone, but it can all be gone in one day. Right, And we see that as scripture shows us, we know we are always accepted in his love and he has adopted us as his sons and daughters. When you know that you belong somewhere, remember, again, I'm going back to the uh, to some of the learnings we did at, at the counseling class for those of us who were there, is that uh, the need to belong, the, the need to uh, feel secure, right? And th so that's what God's love does. He brings us to a place of being secure, a place of belonging. And that's that's how he says, you know, he has adopted us as his own sons and daughters. He, he, he doesn't treat us as slaves. He has bought us as his sons and daughters. Okay, Which leads me to the next point of experiencing the father's love releases us from being like a captive or being enslaved or trapped. Okay, as if you are caged. But here, um, uh, Romans 8, 15 says, you are free. He, that he did not give us the spirit of slavery to be fearful like slaves. There is no need to, be, to feel like a slave because you have the position of sonship. You have the position of being an heir. Okay, and um, uh, also, uh, so the, uh, the next is to experience the Father's love. You are uh, you are free from the need to be controlled or to be manipulated or to be used. Human love often manipulates you for their own use. Um, you may in in a relationship you may feel uh, after someone has had need of something that you've given they've left they 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 really not wanted a relationship with you so you kind of sense a feeling of being used and manipulated and taken advantage of but scripture shows us that we are empowered by God's love when He loves us. It doesn't, it doesn't take away, but it gives to us. You know, human love often, you, you kind of sense that a lot has been taken away, that you've given, 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 and it hasn't been taken away, and there's nothing that can hold you on. But God's love empowers you. The more that you experience God's love, he pours out, you know, grace upon grace. From the abundance of his grace, he pours about grace and grace. So you are empowered by that love. And lastly, experiencing the Father's love takes away all feelings of fear, feelings of what is to come, feeling fear about our, uh, what is at the present, fear about our future, fear about how we would be if we fail, fear about lack, fear about insufficiency, uh, fear about anything, fear about, I mean, think of, think of anything, right? It drives away every feeling because we know that we are in the right place at the right time if we live according to his will. We just begin to understand that God will take care. God is in control. God will hold us through, which shows us that his perfect love drives out all fear. So whatever fear that's coming in, experience the love of the Father. And I think as an, you know, as a, as a general exercise, uh, just coming to that place, especially, you know, fear is something that sometimes can be so real. Um, you know, even even um, as as simple as just being just being fearful about um, 
maybe about doing a test or maybe about meeting someone uh, in an interview or meeting somebody who's quite intimidating or having a conversation that may be difficult. These feelings of fear can, can be very entrapping, but just spending some time to be in the presence and the empowering love of God and say, God, you know, you are here with me as I go through this situation. You see me in, in love. You cover me with, with your love. In fact, uh, you know, Zephaniah says he, uh, he sings over you, right? He, he has songs of rejoicing over you. And that's what it, sh it shows to show that, you know, his love for us drives out all fear. So it's so beautiful to... Uh, to just um, uh, conceive what the love of the Father can do for us, you know, removes us from every place of bondage and trapping into a place of freedom. That's what God's love does. It frees us. It completely takes away everything that holds us back. Okay? And what do, what do we need to do? We simply need to receive this love. And in order for us to uh, to experience this, his, what his love has done for us, we, we receive it. What do we do? We let him love us. Because he is love, because he is our father, we just say, Lord, I receive your love. And not because, you know, you, you don't, um, uh, you don't, expe you, you, you're not, you're not in that state or you you don't have to earn that love or uh, he doesn't he does not meet out his love because of anything anything else but because he's just loved you okay so uh, we find that you do not have to be the best performer or you don't have to be the super the best uh, child okay like how you would see you know in a classroom of 25 children you will have there are two three kids who's yearning for the teacher's love Okay, so uh, it is not like that. God loves each one of us, and because of what He's done for us, so we 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 allow Him to love us because He simply just wants us to receive His love. He simply just wants us to be in a place where we can receive that love. As uh, as I was talking about that verse, Zephaniah three seventeen, it says He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So we find that all our needs, our emotional needs, that sense of acceptance, that sense of security, that sense of love, that sense of purpose and significance is completed when we have, uh, when we receive and have an understanding of God's, God's love for us and walk in, in that love for us. So no matter what happens, in our natural, we can stand rooted and established in the understanding that God the Father loves you. So receiving the Father's love brings about that emotional healing and brings us into a place of wholeness and well-being. So the more that we receive it, the more that we experience it, the more that we are rooted and established by it, we will begin to see the, our inner inner selves are the, the deeper parts of us slowly coming to a place of wholeness. As we said, God's love exchanges so many things for us and brings us to a place of freedom. Amen. Amen. Are we all here? Amen. Okay. All right. Um, we've we've uh, come to an hour, so let's take a 10-minute break. Uh, we're at 10.51. We'll come back at 11.01. We could probably start off with a couple of questions, and then we will go ahead with the rest of the the, the last second two, two truths. So you can quickly go grab a coffee and come back soon.